We are in the thick of farmland saga now, and I've never been so excited to see two men plow some fields and grow some wheat. Here it is, man. Farm Simulator Vinland Saga. We have reached it. And this was quite a pure and wholesome episode for the most part. So this episode covers uh, chapter 63, 64, and 65 of the manga. I pulled out the manga again to see if there was any differences uh, within the storytelling. And honestly, it's pretty much a page-for-page -page retelling of the manga, with the exception of a couple just tiny, tiny little changes. The only one that I feel is really worth mentioning actually happens at the end of this episode. And it calls back to the moment where Thorfinn and Einar were in the barn together and Thorfinn's having another one of his nightmares and, and Einar wakes him. Now, in the anime, they added a little extra bit where Einar, finding out that Thorfinn was a warrior, you know, somebody that is uh, similar to the maybe the type of people that came in, killed his family, and then sold him off into slavery. And he gets down and he goes to seemingly choke out Thorfinn while he's asleep, but he backs off, goes into his, uh, well... I was going to say his bunk, but it's just his pile of hay in the barn. <laughs> and Thorfinn wakes up. Now, in the manga, Thorfinn asks him, you know, uh, thank, says, thank you for that. And Einar says, of course, it's because we're friends. You know, at the end of the day, in the manga, even though Einar stands over him, feels that rage, feels that fury, uh, that he wants to take some sort of vengeance. But, of course, Thorfinn has really nothing to do with the people that hurt him. Uh, Einar decides not to. In the anime, they decide to take that a little bit farther than the manga takes it. I don't think it was a big enough change to say it's a change in Einar's character, really. I think they were just adding a little bit more emotion to it, but to each their own with that opinion. But I felt like the main complaint people had is that they didn't have that moment where Einar says to Thorfinn that we are friends. And I agree, that is a very, very important moment. It's an important thing for him to say because Thorfinn has never had a friend. You know, the mercenary band with Askeladd, those weren't friends. At the most, you could say they're co-workers, but not friends. And even though you could say Thorfinn and Einar are co-workers, they, they grow a much closer bond than anybody Thorfinn ever, you know, talked to in Askeladd's band. So it's different. However, I feel like the anime was taking its time more with this to build up their relationship and their dynamic a little bit more than perhaps the manga has. Now, once again, I think that when you change mediums, I think that you are free to interpret. I don't expect anime to be a just a complete 100% representation of the manga i feel like you need to change it a little bit in order to adapt as long as you keep the character identities the core identities the core themes and you're telling the story i'm okay with changing things or maybe moving a scene here or there or advancing or expanding on a moment i'm perfectly okay with that you know because i always have the manga the manga is right here i can read the manga if i want the manga i'm curious to see what the anime does as it continues its journey now they added that scene in this episode and quite frankly I think it works extremely well in this episode as opposed to episode 4 uh, in the barn because in that moment Einar was fully enraged and in this moment uh, they've had a lot more time together, a lot more experience together, a lot more time working with one another, under understanding each other. Also, it gives Einar time to kind of overcome the knowledge that he learned about Thorfinn being a warrior. And what's very special about this episode that also happens in the manga is Thorfinn kind of opening up a little bit more and having a little bit more curiosity about the process of farming. And that's why I think that it works very, very well at the end of this episode because this episode is very much a journey for Thorfinn in a way, and it's a very, it's very subtle. You know, we don't really get to see a whole lot of motion out of him because he's still very blank, he's still empty, he's still depressed. But with Einar's sort of experience with farming and how to do things properly, you see him being able to educate Thorfinn in these ways, and that we need a horse. A horse would be better for a plow, and if we did this, we'd be able to do this better, and this is the time of year that we need to plant the seeds for wheat, and kind of learning all of these things. And it goes into so many different aspects of what Vinland Saga is all about, the idea that creation is so much more difficult than destruction, but yet so much more beautiful. You get to see the fruits of your labor and the fact that if you put in a lot of hard, strenuous work that eventually you, know, you get to see some results from that. Whereas opposed of just like the, the slaughtering, the killing, and, and all of the damage that Thorfinn has done is very quick. And then you deal with these repercussions for life. So it's like these quick uh, solutions deal with these long-term repercussions. Whereas the long-term creation uh, can deal with even longer, better repercussions, right? Because then, you know, you have this plentiful field to grow from. And so it's interesting to see Thorfinn 
who was so used to just kind of like getting in, being quick, eliminating the target, you know, doing these things that he was doing with Askeladd's band, as opposed to here, where it's like, you know, trying to quickly remove this stump of a tree is not going to work. You can hammer at it all you want. It's going to take forever. It's going to take a bunch of manpower. Uh, having a horse is a better way to do that. And so this episode shows a lot of Einar's influence on Thorfinn and that in particular situations, it's not always, you know, the biggest, the strongest, the fastest, the most skilled fighter that kind of prevails. In this instance, you need somebody that's as knowledgeable as Einar is. And I like that as the episode progresses, it's slow, but as it progresses, uh, Thorfinn begins to ask questions. You know, he says, like, what, why, why would you want to plant it at this time of the year? And then he says, you know, I can't believe somebody would actually create this invention of the plow. Like, this must have been a really skilled farmer that created it. And Einar even calls him, like, you're like a baby discovering this. For, like, this is secondhand knowledge. Like, this is something that you just, you would just inherently know. You don't know this. And, and I love that dynamic between these two characters because it's like, you know, Einar has so much to show, so much to give. He has so much value, you know, that's uh, be, being like thrown into slavery. And, you know, of all places he could be a slave, I suppose Keitel's farm. I mean, the slave hands, I mean, the, the uh, farm hands are still assholes to the slaves. They're still mal malnourished. Uh, they're still obviously being abused for their labor, but... You know, he does kind of have, you do kind of have freedom to roam a little bit, and you're able to create this connection with Thorfinn. You don't constantly have somebody on your back. Uh, so it allows them the opportunity, you know, uh, to to be friends and to create this relationship. And I really, really like it, and I really think it's something special. Uh, we also get to meet Svedkel in this episode. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but this is Keitel's father, who is still on the farm. Uh, not a lot of people know, or they know of him, but not a lot of people talk to him. He's not close to a lot of people. And I love the idea of this, this old man that's worked on a farm his entire life. He knows the ins and outs of it, and he's still determined to work himself. Yes, they have tons of farmhands. Yes, they have slaves, but he is still out there grinding, doing it himself by hand. And I love that. And I feel like we've all known a bunch of old people like that, like old people that have worked their entire life. They, they are just determined to do everything themselves. But I also kind of respect that in a way because it's like, this is who I am. This is what I've done. I am a farmer. I'm going to farm till I die. He even has a line that says uh, something along the lines of, if I die in the fields, that's fine. And I, there's just something that I truly respect about that. Like you're just truly a master of your craft and you are just willing to die for your, let's quote unquote, art. You know, and I really, really kind of respect that. Um, I also think they have a great conversation at the end of the episode, of course, we have Thorfinn, Einar, Svedkel, and Snake. We get to see Snake again and him talking about how important his job is, you know, that it keeps the farm safe from thieves and thieves mostly come at night. So I'm just going to sleep all day and then I'm going to eat your dinner and then I'm going to go look for thieves. And that's kind of like how he does his job. He's like a third shifter, you know, and I, I respect that as well. Um, but what's great about this episode too and even though, obviously, I've read the manga and I know what happens, I still got a chill down my spine when uh, um, Svedkel is talking about how their farm is safe, you know, from invaders because they have 13 uh, bodyguards that are under Snake and then uh, obviously just, like, the rest of them that are there. And, like, what's to stop, like, an invading group of, you know, 60 warriors from showing up here? And it's like, well, Kaido kind of has a deal with King Harold where he brings him a bunch of stuff every year, like a plentiful, gives him a bunch of stuff. And so, you know, the king kind of has an incentive to make sure that this land is, you know, safe from outside invaders and whatnot. And I got the chill down my spine because of the previous episode where uh, King Harold was killed by Canute covertly and so we know as an audience that he's no longer in charge Canute is in charge and that like excitement of the possibility of what that could mean even though I already read the manga like I know what happens but I love that delivery of that line I, and I was just like oh shit you know what I mean even though even already knowing I was just like holy shit like that is a uh, a precursor for disaster um, and so, yeah, all things considered, I love this episode. Obviously, this was more of a character building episode. There wasn't like a ton, uh, there wasn't like a bunch of action or anything, but it wasn't meant to be. This is a slow burn episode, and this is sort of the beginning of a shift in Thorfinn 
that I think we're going to see more of in the next two uh, two episodes coming up for sure. Uh, preview for the next episode shows a new character, uh, Torgil, which I will not spoil anything about in this video, but I'm excited to see him as much of a bastard as he is. I'm excited to see him. So yeah, I love this episode. So let me know what you guys think about it down below. We need a horse. I think that's the name of the episode. Uh, comment what you thought about it down below and stick around for more Vinland Saga content if you're following the anime or if you're following the manga. Uh, I cover all of it on this channel, so if you're a Vinland Saga fan, please subscribe. We appreciate it. Uh, also, if you want to, I have a Patreon, channel memberships, merch store, all that linked down below, as well as my various social media links where you can follow me. Other than that, guys, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you next time.